When I turn up to the table and I look upon the meal Happiness and comfort are the feelings that I feel The rich and hearty layers of the beef and veg ragout Make me absent-minded from everything in view I get lost in wonder as I gaze upon its form Those thin and creamy layers are so rich and sweet and warm I cut myself a slice and I'm in heaven once again This has gotta be the greatest dish there's ever been Oh, oh, it's so tantalizing My, oh my, oh, how surprising When that dish meets my eyes and my taste buds start to sing for beef lasagna, my oh my, beef lasagna, hear me cry, beef lasagna worth a try to make. everybody and welcome back to the Cronin Cook. So this is the very first live stream of the Cronin Cook live streams and it's going to be a lot of fun. So as you can see we're a bit different setup today. Um, bear with us as this is actually the first time we are doing it like this. So we have a real camera, proper wires everywhere and which you can't see of course because the camera couldn't show you. Um, but it's going to be awesome and I really hope you enjoy it. So as you can tell, it's a bit of a different setup than we've had in the past. We're not on Zoom anymore, which is in some respects a good thing because it means that now lots of people can come back and watch this video and it will also be on the YouTube channel for everyone to see. So, I hope you enjoyed today and for today we're going to be making beef lasagna. Now, as you can probably tell from the song, it's a big favourite of mine in the foodie world. I love, love, love it and um, whenever we get ready meals that tends to be the one I go for. But today, I'm not making ready meals. We're making it for ourselves from complete scratch. So it's gonna be really, really good. All right, now I can't claim this recipe as my own. All right, this recipe is from Murray Berry's Cooks of a Feast cookbook. And what we tend to do is we take different cookbooks and we grab a recipe and then I give it to you on Zoom. But it's not Zoom anymore, we're doing it live stream. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. And we're making classic beef lasagna. Okay, so we're gonna dive right into it. All right, and the very first thing we're gonna do is look at the mince. So on Zoom before we were able to get right in the pan, but because we are doing it like this, now this is what we're doing. Okay, so we need a nice big lump of mince in the middle there. So we need 500 grams of beef mince in a nice big frying pan, along with a little drizzle of olive oil, which you can see I've done there. Okay, so we're gonna get that onto a heat. We're gonna get that onto it. A nice, <laughs> dare I say it, medium high heat. Okay, and we're gonna turn that up now. And what we want to do is we want to brown the mince. Okay, so you're gonna need a nice spatula. And we want to brown the mince in the pan. Let me bring it forward for you actually so you can see it better. So here you are. Let's show you what's going on in the pan here. So we wanna brown it, okay? And we're starting off by doing that because we want lots and lots of color on the beef. Okay, so just start separating it. Now, the thing is, beef has come in this strange packaging now where it's all mushed together and it's <laughs> very, very odd. But um, we're gonna try and break it apart here and fry it off, okay? So kind of separate it in the pan and chop it up like I'm doing here, okay? Very, very good. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start mixing it around the pan and as, it, as the heat comes up, it will begin to brown and sizzle. 
okay? And we're also going to season it already. So we're going to season it with salt and we're going to season it with pepper, okay? Very, very good. And we are going to add some pepper first of all. And the thing about lasagna is it is obviously multi-layered um, and has a lot of components to it. So this is a bit of a feasting meal, like if you make it at home. Um, and it's, you know, one of those ones that you put on the table and you're really proud of that you made it. Because uh, once it's done, honestly, when you pull out a slice of it and you just see all the layers, it is such an achievement. And I'm doing just a few pinches of salt there and some pepper too. So this is starting to fry off now, which is great. I can feel the heat coming on. And you'll start to hear a sizzle in a moment. Okay, so we season the meat. That's crucial for a starter. Okay, and we're just going to let this brown off. What we also need to go in here, though, as well, is the lentils. Okay, so we need one nice can of lentils. And it's a good thing I don't have to use a can opener, because they're always a pain. So there we go. Take off the lid like that. Okay, and then strain the juice. If you put the juice in, it's not going to work because it's going to make the whole thing runny. So strain it off with a sieve, which is here. Okay, and we're going to strain it off in the sink like so. You need about 400 grams of lentils. Now, if you've gone full beef, that's fine. Of course, you can do that. It's very traditional. Um, for me, I like to, if not go full vegetarian, then just to do like half and half. So I do like part lentils and part beef because it helps to create a more balanced meal um, and obviously actually is quite a bit more cost effective so just run it under the water it's a way to bulk out mince if you're making anything whether it be chili con carne whether it be um, spaghetti bolognese things of that nature you can always bulk it up with mince um, and lentils so in we go to the pan like that Okay, and we want to put all the lentils in there. Very, very good. And yep, the heat's coming up on this now, which is great. I can see it's starting to steam. And we want to mix them together. And trust me, when it's all mixed into lasagna, you're not going to tell whether it's beef and lentils or not. They're going to be looking exactly the same. So here you go. That's how they should look now. So you're just starting to fry them off and they'll start browning. And it's good to season the whole pan as well because you want those lentils to be seasoned too. So, very, very good. That's browning off. That's fantastic. And I was actually going to tell you a lasagna joke today, but I decided not to because it's multi-layered and cheesy. Um, so, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if you can hear laughter, that is Noah behind the camera. So, it's good, it's good. Um, but there we are. So, that's just frying off nicely. Okay. And it's funny because the other day, we were also um, going to have lasagna. And I walked into the kitchen and my sister was actually pouring it all over herself and I asked her what she was doing and she said that she was putting the dinner on. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's I can't see you laughing anymore. That's the annoying thing. <laughs> I don't know. Can, they can comment, right? Uh, can they comment? We'll look into that before the next live stream. Oh, right. Okay, sure. But I know you can all hear me. That's the important thing. And there is people watching. That's right. Yeah? yeah. Good. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing this all to myself here. It's very strange, this new way of doing it. But it's going to be great and we'll allow lots of film people to see it as well. So, this is what we're doing at the moment. We're just frying this off. But what I'm going to add now, okay, is the onions. So I'm going to add the onions and the garlic to the pan. Okay. So that's two finely chopped onions and two finely chopped garlic cloves going in there. Okay. Very, very nice. And then you can also add in your celery as well. So your four sticks of celery can go in. Very, very good. All right. And we're just going to mix those together. And what we're doing is we're creating the base layer for our lovely ragu. So this is the bulk of it. And then we're going to add the, um, we're going to add the tomatoes and other bits later on. But for now, this is what we're doing. And I can hear it. Can I? It's going to, I'm going to be able to hear it in a minute. It's just warming up. So there we are. Yep, steaming away. And we can just leave that now. There we go. I can hear the sizzle now. And we can just leave that. Okay. And that will just fry off. So, really, really good. I am going to pop this onto the back ring so I can do the sauce. Okay, because we want this to cook. 
and we don't want to play around with it too much while it's cooking. So I've pushed this onto the back ring so I can show you how to do the sauce. So we're going to do this at the same time to save time. Uh, and it's going to be a really simple lasagna recipe as well as a really tasty lasagna recipe. Okay? So there we are. Now I am going to give you a bit of history on the lasagna a bit later on. Um, but part of that history, a fun fact for you is, believe it or not, you may think this comes from Italy, but I have right to believe that it's actually not from Italy at all. It's more from Greece and that kind of area. So you think about Moussaka and things like that. I believe um, it is from that area. So I'm going to give you the history a bit more into that a bit later on. But for now, we're going to let that fry off nicely. Now, what you want to do is work on the sauce. So for that, you're going to need a nice big pan. Okay, nice big saucepan, and we are going to get to work on this. Ba -ba 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 -bum. Turning on my hob here. Very, very good. And you want to get that onto a medium heat. Don't go medium high um, because we don't want to burn anything, especially in the white sauce. It's just not a good idea. So we need butter in this pan. Okay, oops. We need butter. So we need one big spoonful of butter. Oh, right, you need to be able to see it, sorry. So used to following me. So there's the pan, and we need to put one big scoop of butter into it. Okay, so basically about one tablespoon's worth. So about that, it doesn't matter whether it's exact. Um, but lump it in, okay, and that's going to start sizzling away. There we go. Look in there, there you go. And melting that down. Very, very good. Okay. Fantastic. So we're going to melt down the butter, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add the flour. And this is called making a roux, for those of you that don't know. And what we have is we have about two tablespoons-ish, um, about 50 grams of flour going into the butter. So once that's melted down, look, can you see? It's sizzling and going bubbly in the pan there. Very, very good. And now we're going to add in our butter. And you will need a whisk for this, or a wooden spoon. Okay. So get the flour in, and then with my lovely wooden spoon here, I'm going to start mixing this, and you'll see what's going to happen. I don't need the heat for this. So look, you'll start to see that it begins to turn into a paste, and that's just what we want. So it's going to start going gloopy, and it's going to start looking a bit like when you're making fritter rolls, but that's a good thing. So you want it to go like that. Look, that's it. Very, very good. And back onto the heat. It's a bit of a workout, this. It's great. Right, there we are. So, we have our roux working there. And now what we're going to add is slowly add the milk. Okay, and if you haven't made a roux before, you need to add a little bit. Tiny, tiny bit. And we're adding about 750 millilitres of milk here. Okay? And as you stir that, you'll begin to see it turns clumpy again. That is perfectly normal. In with a bit more milk. I'm getting all steamed up here. And it's a good thing the camera's over there, because if it wasn't, Usually the camera will be getting steamed up too now, so it's good, it's good. So we give that a nice mix, and you can see it's clumpy, it's lumpy. It doesn't look great right now, but it will be really smooth. And this sauce is called a bechamel, uh, and it's, I think it's a French name. You can't quote me on that, but I think it is. Um, <laughs> so pour in the milk, and that is part of it. And it's just going to start to mix together now and it will start to lose its lumpiness and start to go quite smooth and delicious. And whilst it does that, you can just let it be. So I'm just going to leave that for a minute. And what you will need to do is grate some cheese in just a moment. So we're going to grate cheese on here in just a second. So we're going to do cheese and my beef is cooking away. Make sure you're keeping an eye on that. And you can't see it anymore, can you? No. <laughs> So it's just browning at the moment. So just keep browning the mints while we get on with the sauce. So it's really, really good. And that is browning away nicely. So what we want to do is cook the veg and all of that beef and lentils. And it's going in the oven as well, so there's no need to worry about having raw meat problems or anything like that. So it's good. Give the sauce a mix. Very, very nice. Now you can see here. I'll take this up to you. You can see. Oh, there we go it's starting to go smooth. <laughs> I'm steaming up the camera. There we are, very, very good. Okay? 
So we're going to keep mixing this and then add milk as it gets thicker and thicker. So what you're doing is you're letting it get thick once you add the milk. Then once it's thick again, add some more milk, add some more milk, add some more milk. And it really is good. And that's the way you make it. If you lump it all in at once, which is a very tempting thing to do, okay, you are actually sadly going to lose um, your nice smooth sauce and it will just turn into a runny bowl of milk. And that's not what you want at all. So, in with a bit more milk now. There we are. Very, very nice. Good, good. And we are almost there now. So that is nice and thick still, and that's why it's important to take it slow, because you want it to keep its consistency. So while that's thickening up again, we're going to grate some cheddar cheese. Now, the recipe does specify for parmesan, but you don't have to use parmesan. Um, you can use cheddar, it works just fine. Okay, and what you need is about 50 grams, 50 grams of parmesan. <laughs> so we're going to give this a great, and I'm going to estimate here because to be fair, as much as measurements are important, uh, I, <laughs> I make bechamel sauce an awful lot um, for a lot of things. And once you've made it a few times, you kind of get used to the measurements for it. Um, so I need about 50 grams which is about maybe a quarter of a block. If you've got a block like this, this is a gigantic block here, um, but it's good. So I'm using just a bog standard cheddar um, and it's very, very good for this kind of thing because you're only making a sauce, you know, you're not adding it as a garnish or anything like that. So I've got 50 grams of cheddar there, which you cannot see because the grater's in the way. There we go, lovely grated cheddar. And cheddar's a great melty cheese. Um, <laughs> it's a funny name, but it is. Um, whereas things like um, parmesan and things like that also are, uh, but parmesan's a lot more tangy and has got much more of like a sharpness to it, which has a nice, it's a nice flavour in the lasagna, but I quite like using cheddar, to be honest, for me, for me. So we're good. The beef is cooking nicely here. And once I've moved the sauce out of the way, you'll be able to see that. So it's good, it's a nice looking sauce in here. We're almost finished with that. And I obviously you can't raise your hand because I can't see you anymore, but if you're sitting there at home and you haven't made this before, you know, it's the kind of dish, once you've made it once, you want to make again, because it's a lot of fun. It really is, especially when we get to layer it all up in here. It's a lot of fun. And the sauce is thickening up again, which is important. Very, very good. And so I do have another joke for you. Um, <laughs> I can see no one's face behind the camera. It's, all the jokes on here tend to be terrible, but now we're live streaming, lots of people will get to see them, so let's hope I get a few good laughs out of it. Um, so here we go. Why did the pasta chef quit his job? They cut his salary. I'm sorry. They're not any better on YouTube, are they? Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> so now what you can do, just by the way, for the mints, is add your stock. So about 150 millilitres of stock is what I've got here. And I've just got it in this little mug. And what I've got uh, is veggie stock. Now the recipe says beef stock, but you can use any stock you want. Um, chicken stock, beef stock, vegetable stock, any of them. They're all good. And pour it all over your mince. And that's going to start to help to start boiling it rather than frying it. Now I'm moving to simmering and getting it nice and flavourful and using stock is a really good way of doing that. So I've just added that to my frying pan. So I'll just show you what's going on in there now. Look at that. So the stock is mixing in with the mince and the veg. Now would not be a good time to drop the pan. Um, so <laughs> there we are, look. Really, really nice. And it looks great. I can see that, I can see what I'm doing over on the laptop there and I love what the camera, what it makes the camera look so good. Anyway, so there we are milk is thickening up again a bit more goes in there and now once we have almost used all the milk so I've got about um, maybe a quarter left and what we're going to do is we're going to add the cheese because the cheese also works as a thickening agent too and that's really important so in with our cheese and I'm going to put that in the greaseproof paper here in a little parcel 
There we are. And now we're going to add a little bit by little bit. Okay, so just a little bit first, and that will melt into it. And I can't really show you what's going on in here right now, but the cheese is just melting. So it'll do the same for you. <laughs> very, very good. And in with a bit more. There we are. Very, very nice. And you can use this sauce for absolutely loads of things. Okay, so you can use it for when you're making normal pasta. So if you're making like a mac and cheese, this sauce works really well. Just add more cheese. Um, if you're making like uh, bacon and uh, creamy sauce carbonara, use this sauce. It works really well. It's very, very versatile. And in with a bit more cheese. And the last of the cheese as well goes in, like so. And so far, for the Korean cook veterans out there, my kitchen's pretty tidy. So, proud of that. I'm proud of that. <laughs> We're going to mix in the cheese. Very, very nice. And now, so you can see what's going on in there, look. Oh, yes. Thick, rich, and gooey. And that's the important thing in the lasagna. So, oh, <laughs> this is so, <laughs> this is very new. Look at that. I don't want to spill it, but it's really, really good. So, look. Really delicious, and the cheese is just melting down. And it's getting really thick again, which is important. And as the cheese thickens it, let it be, just for a minute. We don't want to lose the thickness by adding more milk just yet. So let it be, let it bubble away, let it do its thing. It's really, really good, okay? And I do have a bit of a fact for you as well about this. So just follow me around here, because all my information is over here. Um, <laughs> when Mary Berry, first cooked this recipe on television in the 1970s. She used dripping to fry the meat and vegetables. So the stock is obviously a great way of doing it, but she used dripping. And what it does is it adds an incredible flavor to the lasagna. But because nowadays, you know, it's not so good to use, using something like a beef stock is amazing. But better yet, okay, if you make like a roast chicken or something, use the stock. So like, you know, get the bones, and whack them into a pot, you know, and boil it with water and with celery and onion and garlic and things like that and make a stock with it. It's so, so good. So, so good. Okay? So, really nice. The beef and the lentils are cooking down nicely. And the sauce is thickened up very well. Just going to add some more milk now. And they call this comfort food, and there is a reason why, because it is incredibly comforting to eat and also one thing that is really good about lasagna is that if you're a small family you know or you're just yourself and things like that you can make it you know if it's vegetarian even better you can make it you know and then save the rest so this recipe serves six people um, and this one will serve our whole family quite readily and heartily so that's really good um, but, you know, if you double this recipe, you can make it for 12, you know, and use it as like a feast when you have friends over or at Christmas. You know, maybe the turkey is the best thing for Christmas, but I personally think that you could use this, you know, for a Boxing Day meal, and that would be amazing. But there we are. Okay, so there we go. That's all the milk in there now. And as you can see, it's really good. It's a great sauce, and it's come together really nicely. Okay, very, very nice. So I'm just gonna see if I have a whisk now. So I want to transition to a whisk to avoid any lumps that might be hanging around in there. So just get a lovely whisk and give it a nice mix. Okay, very, very good. And yeah, there we go. That's amazing. Almost finished now with the sauce. And of course, the only other component that's needed is pasta. And I'm not going to show you how to make fresh pasta today, although I have done it, and it's a lot of fun. Um, but maybe that's one for another time. That would be, that'd be great, doing it across here and pasta. Anyway, it would be awesome. And that's for another time. So the sauce is basically done. So I'm going to take that off the heat. And what you're looking for is, sorry, it's a bit of a funny analogy, but think of wallpaper paste you know, and just think slightly looser than that, okay? So just a little bit looser than that, because if it's too runny, it's just gonna spill all over the lasagna, go down the sides, 
which might be nice, but isn't the idea for a lasagna. Okay, so we just want to keep it a nice thickness. So I've just taken it off the heat, and now, just before we finish with this, we're going to add the last ingredient, which would be thyme and mustard. I don't have any thyme. <laughs> How ironic! <laughs> I don't have any thyme is in the herb, but I have the mustard, so you need two teaspoons of Dijon mustard going in. And Dijon mustard is like a, a bit like a French mustard, um, and it is really, really strong. Uh, so, in other words, <laughs> Use it sparingly. There we are. Very, very nice. Give that a mix. And now you can see that's the finished sauce. Okay? So it's got a slight yellow tinge to it, which is important because that's just the mustard. Give it a good whisk. Get any lumps out of it. Very nice. Okay, guys. So that is the sauce. Now look over here with me at the mints. Oh, you can't go there, can you? <laughs> I have to come to you. There we are, look at the mints. They've cooked off really nicely and the stock has reduced and allowed for the beef juices to mix with it. Or if you're doing vegetarian, the lentils will be working hard to get flavour in there as well. So, very, very good. Look at that. Nice. And if you've got any bits around the side, make sure you scrape them down because Otherwise, you might have some raw meat up there. We just want to make sure all of it gets cooked. So, that's brilliant, but we're not finished. Definitely not finished. Okay, so this, go over here now. I'm going to turn off heat on that hob. So I'm doing a lot of switching so you can see. But here we are. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of flour to the mince. And the reason we do that is to thicken the sauce. Okay, so we're going to add a little bit of flour. So about two tablespoons again, a bit like the roux and we're just going to pop that in and i'm using gluten-free flour because i make most of the things that i have gluten-free um, and we're just going to mix that in and it just starts to thicken up the sauce and allow for room for those tomatoes to get in there and not make it super runny so if you're using chopped tomatoes in today's recipe um, you'll probably have two tans, two cans of lovely chopped tomatoes, and they're great. But because I like using this, which is Italian passata, moving closer to the camera, there it is. Not sponsored by Sainsbury's. Not sponsored by Sainsbury's, no. <laughs> but if, <laughs> no, what you need to do is then add in your chopped tomatoes. So we're adding in all the lovely tomatoes here. Okay, and of course, it's the classic look of the lasagna, isn't it? You know the white sauce, the pasta, and then the delicious lasagna, of course. So, I'm putting everything in the sink. It's going to be a bin for today, and I'll take it all out later. Um, but there we are. So, in we go with the tomatoes. And the colour's not going to look too red right now, and there's a reason for that, because you're basically just using chopped tomatoes, whereas the key ingredient in this recipe is tomato puree, which we're going to add in just a moment. So... I haven't memorised all my jokes, but I have quite a few on here. So, haha, -ha, yes. What do I have? Mm. So one thing, uh, I should have mentioned this at the start, but obviously having a nice big um, lasagna, you want something to go with it. So garlic bread, salad is amazing, things like that. So uh, I do have a joke for you, and it's terrible. I'm going to warn you. Um, it is terrible. But what did the salad host... No, what am I talking about? What did the... Sa what did the host of the salad competition say? Can you guess? Let's begin. That's exactly right, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Let us begin. There we go. <laughs> it's a good joke, it's a good joke. Okay, now we're going to go in with some tomato puree. And it's funny because the end of the lid of the tomato puree actually pierces the top. Have you ever noticed that? So, like... It's like <laughs> the top of the tomato puree is the bit you poke inside of it to open it up. So there you go. It's a little hack for you if you hadn't noticed that before. I noticed it and, I, and it was, it's awesome. So what you need is about, one moment, uh, ah, three tablespoons of tomato puree. Thank you, Mary Bailey. So that's one, that's two, 
That's three. Yes, it makes very strange noises. There we are. Okay, so pop the lid on. So I don't want that squirting all over me later on. And then mix it in. And that is immediately gonna change the color. Immediately. And you'll see that it will start to be rich and red. And that's the, obviously the iconic colors of lasagna. So give that a nice mix. There we go. So I'll show you this in just a second. Just a moment. And spoon it in from the sides. Make sure I got all of it going in there. Okay, there we are. Oh, and by the way, why did the past have to take out car insurance? It ended up old dente. That one is actually really bad. And just in case you didn't know, old dente is a word for partly cooked pasta um, or just slightly crunchy. Um, but there we go. So look at this. We got the delicious red color going on in there now. Okay, and you can see that is definitely ragu worthy. All right, so again, seasoning, very important. I use Himalayan rock salt. Uh, it's a fantastic salt and has an amazing flavor. Uh, it's also very good for you. Um, and then you can just use bog standard black pepper. I've got some white pepper and some red pepper in here. It adds lots of different flavors to it. I'm going to add a really good grind of this in here and hope I don't sneeze. There we are. Very nice. I don't know that has gone at the back of my throat. Very good. One second. <laughs> okay. So, we're doing good. And what we're going to do now is we're going to look at this here and we're going to check because what we want to make sure is that it's not too runny. If you've got lots of sauce spilling around the outside, uh, it's too runny. And it needs to be a really thick consistency to work as a ragu. If it is like that, you just need to leave it and let it simmer down uh, just for like 10 minutes, that's it, okay? And it will just be, by the end of that 10 minutes, nice and thick again. But you know what, I think we're okay for this one. So we are actually gonna move straight on into the layering part of it, which is the best bit. And I'm gonna get this over here so I can show you what's going on. So I have a nice big tray there. Can you see me? Yes? Good. Right, so we've got a nice big tray, nice big dish, and Pyrex is a great thing to use because they are really sturdy and also oven proof. So make sure the one you use is oven proof before you go whack it in the oven or else you can have a nasty shock when your lasagna is filling everywhere. And not all glassware is good for whacking in the oven. So, there we are, look. There's the mince. Very, very nice. So just have a look there. And that's what I'm working with. Okay, delicious. Then, that's heavy. This is the sauce. Ooh. Really delicious. Bechamel, cheesy goodness sauce. And if you want to smoke paprika in there, it adds a very, very good flavor to it. Okay, and finally, the pasta. And the good thing about this is it's handy dandy packaged pasta, um, and it's just dried lasagna sheets, and my tomatoes are blowing up. You know when they do that, they like just pop on the top, and it looks <laughs> really strange. Okay, so lasagna sheets, like this. Okay, they're very, very, very good, and these are just dried, okay? So there we are, and these are gluten-free, um, so they might look a bit different to yours, but they work just fine. So there we are, okay, and I've got all my lasagna sheets here, and it's important you set up a bit of a workstation, because, where is my grease grease paper? Oh, I threw it away. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, we need the pasta, okay, so we need this here, and we need both of your components for the rest of it to be on hand, okay, because we're layering now. So. The first thing you want to do is do a meat layer. So, a nice big spoonful of the meat or the meat alternative. So we're gonna add about three big spoonfuls in there and then flatten it right down. Can you see all this? Mm -hmm. So flatten it right down and push it right into the edges. Okay, 
lovely, warm, delicious. Okay, so smooth it out. Then, in with some pasta. And this is the way I layer it up. So one, two, three. All we need is three, okay? Then, sauce. So bechamel. Over the top, just a little bit. Use it a bit sparingly, because you don't want to run out. And then, I'm going to use a rubber spatula and smooth it all out into the edges. So all over the pasta, like so. Remember, we're using layers, so it doesn't look like a lot now, but as it layers up, there'll be a lot. <laughs> okay, so very, very good. Very nice. Meat. Yes, meat. There is a method to this. So meat goes on top of the sauce. Very, very good. Into that corner, into that corner, and smooth it out. And don't worry if it mixes up, that's totally fine. And then pasta again. So three layers of pasta. One, two, three. And you can see where this is going now. Sauce on top like so. So right into the edges, like you're tucking in a quilt. Push it right into the corners. Very, very nice. And it smells amazing. That cheesy sauce definitely smells like mustard um, <laughs> because it's Dijon and that's stronger than horseradish, um, debatably, but it is so strong. Um, and then in with the meat. So lovely. Just kind of dropping over the top there. Okay. Um, and the funny part about it is that actually I had lasagna in a restaurant the other day. Not really, this is a joke. Um, but I had lasagna in a restaurant the other day and I asked the waiter how long it would be and he told me he didn't know but he'd measure it. Um, so. <laughs> ah, and so I know it, it's like performing to. There's no crowd there. You can't tell if they like it or not. But I'm hoping you're laughing at home. You're going to have to put a message on the Korean cook chat and let me know what am I doing. Not sauce yet, it's pasta. Sorry, I'm talking too much. Focus, Oscar. Pasta, pasta, pasta. Very, very nice. We're almost at the top. Okay. Meat. Sauce. Sauce. All the way over the top. And I've still got a little bit left for the final layer. Meat. There we are. And this is the last of the meat, by the way. So all the way over the top, every last bit. Very, very good. I'm excited, actually. Um, <laughs> there we are, into the edges. And look, there is barely enough room for one final layer, but I'm going to make room because we need one. So finally, pasta, pasta, pasta. And I've got a few left now, so what I'm going to do is break them. And it sounds weird, but actually what I'm going to do is start patching it. Can you see? Uh, can they see? Yes. Yes, they can. Good. So um, what I'm doing is I'm taking little bits of pasta and I'm patching in the top layer because the top layer is the bit which is going to look really cool and it's going to look really fancy. So we want to make sure this one looks good. It doesn't matter what's underneath. Um, <laughs> it's what's on the very, very top that counts. So there we are. Very, very good. Just breaking up and patching in those edges with the excess pasta, don't feel free just to put it on top of the other one as well, if you've got some spare. Then, sauce, finally. Give that a good mix, because the bottom can tend to be a little bit lumpy sometimes. And there we are, look, finally, the last bit of sauce, all over the top, down into the corners. Make sure you get everything here, guys. It's very, very important that you layer it up like that. There we are, make sure you get everything out. And then, spatula time. All over the top. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is the epitome of comfort food. So over the top, and give it a good spread. Very, very nice.
So I believe I've told you all my jokes for today. But Noah, if you have any impromptu ones, be sure to go ahead. No? Are we good? I don't think I'm hearing more of my jokes, to be fair. Um, so, yeah, I hope that you've got this far along with me. And if you haven't, then it's absolutely easy to catch up. Um, just follow the layering process. So, that is meat, pasta, sauce, meat, pasta, sauce, meat, pasta, sauce, meat, pasta, sauce. Pasta, sauce, cheese. Cheese. This is cheese, for those of you that appreciate that joke. Um, so, there we are, over the top. And now I'm using the finer setting because what I want to do is get a really even coverage of the whole thing. So, just like broadband, we want good coverage on this one. <laughs> uh, we want to make sure we go right into the edges and then all over the top. Ah. Oh my gosh, you know what I've done? I forgot to say to preheat the oven. Preheat the oven, right now, do it right now. Preheat your oven, <laughs> get it onto a heat. What we need is a 200 Celsius, which is 180 Celsius if you're going on a fan oven, which is 400 Fahrenheit, and then gas mark six. And then if you're using an Arga, uh, the middle of the roasting oven for 40 to 45 minutes. So there you are. But I doubt you're using an Arga. Um, but there you go. So finally, I'm going to do more of a chunky side for the top, because we want nice oozy cheese. If you don't have lots of settings that want to grate it like I do, you can just, you know, just grate it or whatever when you do. And if you do have Parmesan, now would be a good time to put it over the top, because that will add a really good flavour to it. And finally, season the top. It might sound odd, but I think it's a good idea. So season it with a little bit of salt, not too much. You don't want somebody getting a nice mouthful of salt. Um, but just give it a nice season on top. And especially pepper, because it adds a nice heat to the top of it as well. There we are. And while you sit here and watch this lovely lasagna, I will give you a little bit of history on it, because I always do. So, history please, iPad. Thank you. Ah, oh, there's the lasagna. Just so you can see. Oh. <laughs> Let's come in a bit closer so we can have a look. So this is how mine's turned out. So if you have a look there, you can see all the different layers on the side. And it's really, really good. Oh, I'm very excited right now. <laughs> okay, it's a, good, it's a good meal, but let's find out where it came from. Okay, so, like many other Italian dishes, or supposedly Italian dishes, it's definitely evolved over time, in the sense that it didn't start off like this. And, if I keep looking over here, it's because I haven't memorised the history, and it's right there. So, the traditional lasagna, a la bolognese, excuse me if I'm not saying that right, Okay, is the first course consisting of layers made of pasta dough with egg and spinach. Okay, so that's the idea for some lasagnas. This one's a bit different. Um, but what happened was, is the term lagana, already used in Roman times, referred to a square or rectangular shaped thin sheets, sheets which obtained from a mixture of wheat flour and then they were baked or fire cooked. Okay? And what happened was then, is the practice of boiling mixtures in water, okay, actually dated right back to the Middle Ages, and this soon evolved to become like this. But how did it do that? That is the question. Okay, tomato appeared in the recipe for the first time in 1880 in the polls. Okay, while the use of layered lasagna is vague, uh, well, sorry, that's wrong, of layered lasagna, in vogue today is due to Francesco Zambrini from Bologna, who introduced it into the 19th century. The success and fatherhood of the Bolognese lasagna is due to some Bolognese-based restaurateurs who popularised the use of spinach in the dough at the beginning of the 20th century. And around the same time, the use of the meat and the sauce and the grated parmesan came in as well. So, it started off in Rome and it's ended up 
being known as an Italian dish. So, it's a great thing, it's an amazing meal, and I really hope you enjoyed my first live stream. Please, um, if you can, when they open up, um, leave me a comment and let me know whether you enjoyed it. And also, hmm? What? I, I can't read, I can't. Okay. <laughs> but there we go, so have a look for the final time. There it is, and what happens here is you whack it into the oven for 45 minutes until it's golden and bubbling around the edges, and when it is, just cut it up and eat it. Just sit down, put on some smooth jazz and just enjoy it because it's really, really good. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That's, that's the slogan, isn't it? Like, share and subscribe. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I've ever said that before. Um, like, share and subscribe, everybody, if you can. Um, the Crooning Cook YouTube channel, we do have other tutorials on there at the moment. We have one that was filmed in my back garden, which was really fun to do. Um, and we have the live streams coming in every month, so make sure you come back and check in on those. It's been awesome to have you with us today. I hope you enjoyed today's recipe and enjoyed the song and the jokes and the music and everything. It's been a lot of fun. And now I need to find something to put this cheese in because it's been sitting here a long time. So, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next month. Bye-bye, everybody.